And we are back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. And for the final part of the show, we're going to talk about the Minnesota Vikings and their draft plans, their quest for a quarterback, as I have it uh, labeled here on the bottom. So, article I was reading regarding what a former Vikings GM had to say about the team, saying that the team will have to overpay to trade up for a top quarterback prospect. So, a CBS Sports analyst, uh, NFL analyst, Rick Spielman, uh, thinks the Vikings would have to part ways with their 2025 first-round pick in order to move all the way up from 11 to number 4 to get the quarterback they want. In this case, quarterback could be J.J. McCarthy. Uh, and this is what he had to say. I heard a lot of things that Minnesota thought he had an excellent pro day up there and fits exactly what Kevin O'Connell wants to do from an offensive standpoint. But, and this is, and he said this on the With the First Pick podcast, but they're not just going to get it with the with the two first round picks they're gonna have to throw in their first round pick in 2025 plus some more draft capital to do what they have to do to go up and get it so we'll see if that ends up being the case um but yeah i mean going from pick 11 to four yeah you're gonna have to give up some draft capital to do that and the vikings are a team and i did mention them before when talking about the Cowboys and their situation with Dak, you look at their roster. What what do they really need at this very moment? It's a quarterback. Because right now, I think they have the roster where they can compete. They're another team that has that roster. You look at the offensive weapons that they have and the defense played better last season under Brian Flores. Now they did lose to Neil Hunter. They did bring bring in Jonathan Grenard, uh, Anthony Van Ginkle. They still got some good players on that. De- they brought in a couple of good players on that defense, and they still have good players on that defense. So, I mean, well, when you think of the Vikings, you think more of their offense and the weapons they have there. They need a quarterback. And right now, you know, they bring in Sam Darnold, which I, I think... Sam Darnold could be fine as, like, the stopgap. But you need to have a long-term plan there. And losing Kirk Cousins, that was unfortunate. But, again, they weren't looking to give him $100 million guaranteed for the 2024 season. So, now they're looking at the draft. And they already made, you know, a, a trade with the Texans to move up. And if their guy is there... They could look to move up even more. And just like what Spielman says, they they seem to really like J.J. McCarthy. And J.J. McCarthy, like I've been saying, his stock has been rising. And you got teams like the Giants that could be interested. Supposedly, now Jane Daniels is, is set to meet with the... Uh, with the commanders i think he already or he already did i saw an article that said like monday or monday and tuesday well today's wednesday so i don't know if that was for this week or next week regardless meeting with the commanders twice commanders could be the team that takes him with their pick and then we'll see what the patriots do um at theirs but supposedly the giants have some interest in jj mccarthy Maybe there's another team that could trade up. But the Vikings, they they want to, I think, get one of these top guys. And, yeah, they might have to give up a hefty sum to get him. Because you got two studs at wide receiver. You got the arguably the best wide receiver in the NFL, and that's Justin Jefferson. Then you got Jordan Addison, who's coming off of a good rookie season. You got TJ Hawkinson, who bounces, hopefully bounces back from his knee injury that he suffered towards the end of the year. Aaron Jones bringing him in on a one-year deal. They got weapons on this team. And they need a quarterback. So, that rookie quarterback, it's this is a big deal. This is a big deal. And if they want that guy, yeah, they like I said, you're going to have to big up, might have to give up a lot to get him out. I don't know if it's going to be like what Spielman's saying, but maybe it is. And... If it's J.J. McCarthy. Now, whether you like J.J. McCarthy or not, he would be stepping into a good situation. 
Because I know I mentioned how I did see comments that he's Zach Wilson 2.0 and how Zach Wilson had a great pro day and look at what ended up happening. Well, here's the thing. Zach Wilson didn't get drafted into a good situation. J.J. McCarthy would be getting drafted into a good situation because you got the best wide receiver in the NFL, in my opinion, and the other weapons that I just mentioned. And Kevin O'Connell, I think, is a good offensive-minded head coach. So, and he might not have to start right away. Zach Wilson started on day one. Now, Zach Wilson, I think, is for his rookie season. Like, you go back to the Titans game, and he showed, he made a couple of throws where you're like, wow, this guy could be the future. But then, it just... After his rookie season, it just was downhill from there. And, again, I don't want to make this a Zach Wilson segment, but that's what, what people are... Some people on social media are comparing him to is... Zach Wilson. And it seemed like J.J. McCarthy at times didn't have to do much because he was on a loaded team in Michigan. And like I said, they ran the ball for like over like almost 300 yards or around 300 yards in the national championship game. So, but I think he is, whether you like him or not, he is stepping into a good situation with the Vikings if that's what they end up doing. And I just pulled up his college stats. Now, again, stats don't tell the whole story. But in 2021, five touchdowns to two interceptions. Then basically had the same touchdown-interception ratio the next two seasons. 22 to 5. And then uh, 22 touchdowns to four interceptions. Didn't pass for... Uh, uh, 2022, 2,719 passing yards. And then 2,991 passing yards in 2023 but actually yeah i mean you look at some of the games well you look at the national championship game 10 of 18 140 yards wasn't asked to do too much then against alabama uh, the game before that 17 to 27 221 yards three touchdowns no interceptions and i'm looking at some of the other games as well um from this past season and you know it didn't a lot of those games uh or at least some of the games I was looking at, didn't even pass for over 200 yards. So, yeah, I'm seeing, like, the against Iowa, only had 147 yards, 148 against Iowa State. Oh, Ohio State, sorry. Iowa, Ohio. Uh, against Maryland, had 141 yards passing. Again, it doesn't tell the full story, but, again, just saying. Doesn't throw for, at least the games that I'm looking at right here in front of me, didn't throw for a ton of yards. But again, that's just that's just um a couple games there. So, you know, and in this offense, if you get drafted to the Vikings, yeah, you're going to be asked to throw the ball because of the playmakers that you have. You want to have a running game that you can rely upon too. And I think bringing in a veteran like Aaron Jones it was a smart move, again, just on a one-year deal. But again, I mean, J.G. McCarthy isn't even a Viking yet, but I'm just, it seems like they they want him. That could be their guy. But another team could step in and say, no, he's going to be our guy instead. At least for the moment, though, you look at the first two picks, it seems like it's going to be obviously Caleb Williams and then Jaden Daniels, it seems like at this current moment could be the number two overall pick. So then that leaves you with Drake May, J.J. McCarthy. They're probably the next two that will be taken off the board. Right now, the way things are looking. And then you also got Michael Penix. You also got Bo Nix from Oregon, who I really have not mentioned on the show. They, they'll they probably be taken a little bit later. But, yeah, it's going to be interesting. You're, you're going to see... You, you will see teams moving up and moving down in the draft. That's that's a guarantee. But for the Vikings, going to have to give up some more uh, capital to go and uh, maybe get your guy. And again, it's just unfortunate for them that they had to lose Kirk Cousins because 
the division has gotten better. The Lions aren't going anywhere. The Packers are going to be really good, I think. The Bears, Caleb Williams is going to be stepping into a good situation there. Right now, let's see what the Vikings do. And I think, again, whoever they draft might sit behind Sam Darnold. They're, they're going to have an opportunity to maybe beat him out in camp and in preseason to get the starting job, but maybe they don't get it right away and Sam Darnold starts. But if they had Kirk Cousins, I would be I would really like the Vikings going into this year. But right now, because the quarterback position, yeah, it's, it, right now I look at them as with the Bears, third or fourth place. But that's just a credit to how loaded the division is. Because what the Bears did in the offseason, I like what they did. The Packers exceeded expectations in 2023, and they're going to be even better. Jordan Love can carry over what he did his first full year as a starter. If we're going to get that Jordan Love towards the end of the season for a full season in 2023, oh, yeah, the Packers are going to be really good. And I believe they are going to be really good. And then you still got the Lions. Division, Both North divisions, the AFC North and the NFC North, are very competitive. Now, again, the AFC North is the best division in football, in my opinion. But don't sleep on the NFC North because that division is going to be really good as well. But now we got to see what uh, the, the Vikings and the Bears do. Bears are going to take Caleb Williams. Vikings are going to be taking a quarterback. At least with the Lions and the Packers, we already know. You got Jared Goff. Packers got your, uh, Jordan Love. So... Yeah, excited about this division. This division is going to be a lot of fun. Going to be a lot of fun. So, but yeah, that that's uh, that's basically it though. When discussing this particular topic, let me know what you guys think. What the Vikings will end up doing? Do you think that they are? I mean, again, if their guy gets up ends up getting taken, then maybe they do something else with the pick. But it seems like the Vikings might not be done yet. They might be looking to try to move up even more and try to lock down one of these top guys. So, well, it's either going to be Drake May or J.J. McCarthy. But we'll see. Because, again, you got the Patriots, the Cardinals. I mean, yeah, the Cardinals might be – well, the Cardinals is the team that has the fourth pick in the draft that they want to move up to the fourth pick. So – I mean, that's, uh, we'll keep an eye on that. But the Cardinals, they might want to stay where they are and get, you know, one of the top receivers. But apparently, I was listening to the radio, and apparently, I think Adam Schefter might have said this, but now it seems like Malik Neighbors might be the first wide receiver taken instead of Marvin Harrison Jr. See, that's why, like, I... I'd, I don't really want to do a mock draft because it's just, I mean, I might, but it's just like so many, like, so many experts are, you know, conflicting them or, or you know, contradicting themselves. And, and it's just, you know, now, now, again, what I just said, now apparently Malik Neighbors might be the first wide receiver taken instead of Marvin Harrison Jr., or conflicting things, and I, I said contradicting, but conflicting. You know, you hear one expert saying this, another one saying that. It's just like, I don't know. But again, it, it, you know, it is what it is. It's it's all just, it's all predictions. You know, it, th things are going to, no one is going to create the perfect mock draft. It's not going to happen. But I just thought that was interesting if that actually is true. But... We will see. The draft is, uh, it'll be here before we know it. It is towards the end of this month, and all of our questions will be answered once we get there. So, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it for the show for today. Thank you guys for tuning in. Again, make sure to tune in to our other shows here on the GSMC Sports Network. Greatly appreciate that. Uh, the postseason, like I said, will be starting for the NBA and the NHL got baseball in full swing college basketball is over so 
Uh, and also tune into the UFL as well, even though, like I, I said yesterday, I haven't really been paying attention to it. But I did do a UFL topic, so make sure to check that out on both YouTube channels or wherever you get your podcast as well. But, um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it for me. Again, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, that is all the time that we have for today. Again, um, we'll be back again tomorrow, same time, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. And until then, I'm your host, Kenneth Grunfelder, signing off from the GSMC Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Have a good day, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Take care.